Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for Cougar Care Connection. Uh, our, it's our virtual event for support services here at the College of Charleston. Um, I'm Devin Thompson. I'm with the Visitor Services team here in the Office of Admissions. And again, I'm just so excited to join you all. I'm going to be moderating tonight's event and we have so many great campus partners on tonight to share with you um, the wonderful resources that are available to students here at the College of Charleston. Um, hopefully it'll really provide you with a key introduction to some of the offices at the center of um, student success at C of C. So our next slide um, will show you that during tonight's event, you're going to hear presentations again from a variety of offices on our campus. Um, we will have the chat function enabled. You've probably seen me make a few announcements tonight um, already. So if you have questions either during our presenters um, sessions or afterwards, please feel free to drop those in the chat and um, we'll make sure to answer those. Um, we can also take general admissions related questions as well. So um, again, feel free to share those there. And I'd also like to point out, I dropped a link in the chat before we got started um, for attendance tonight. We definitely want to mark that you all came. Um, and if you fill that out, you'll also be entered into a raffle for a fun CFC prize. So don't forget to do that before you log off tonight. Well, with all of those announcements, um, I'm very pleased to introduce you all to our new uh, newest member to the CFC admissions team, our Dean of Undergraduate Admissions, Kayla Granville. Kayla. Thank you, Devin, and greetings and welcome to the Cougar Care Connection info session. My name is Kayla Granville and I serve the College of Charleston as the new Dean of Admissions. So we are so excited to have you join us virtually tonight. And the College of Charleston offers numerous academic programs and student support resources to prepare students for opportunities not yet imagined. Whether it's marine biology, systems engineering, or international studies, students can explore and be prepared for the careers of tomorrow. I want to thank Devin and our campus partners for creating this event tonight for all of our students and families. And should you have any additional questions about the College of Charleston and the resources that have been shared tonight, please connect with any member of our team and certainly all of our gracious campus partners as well. Thank you for your time, and I will turn it back over to Devin. Thank you, Kayla. All right, well, uh, for the moment you've, one of the moments you've all been waiting on, right? Uh, let's get started with our event this evening. The first office that we're going to hear from is um, from the Office of Financial Aid and Veterans Affairs, and this uh, presentation is going to be led by Erica Harrison-Jones. So, Erica, um, I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you, Devin. Um, so as Devin has indicated, my name is Erica Harrison Jones. I'm the Associate Director for Scholarships in our uh, Office of Financial Assistance and Veterans Affairs. Uh, next slide. So what is the role of our office? Uh, we uh, perform quite a few different tasks um, as it relates to um, both incoming students, prospective students, and returning students. Um, so our office is tasked with determining eligibility for most of the state, federal, and institutional financial aid that's awarded to students. Uh, this includes scholarships that come from the state of South Carolina, if you're a South Carolina resident. Um, it also includes grants from the state of South Carolina, any type of grants that are available from the federal government, federal student and parent loans, uh, federal work study, and then uh, any type of institutional grant funding. Um, our office is also responsible per for performing the federal verification process on students that have been selected by the federal government. Uh, we also have the ability to exercise what's called professional judgment uh, when mitigating circumstances are present. So these mitigating circumstances would be things such as if you experienced a job loss or if there was a change in marital status or if you um, in some cases had substantial medical expenses. We're able to take that information um, and reevaluate a student's eligibility for financial aid. We also do things like these presentations um, this evening where we provide guidance to campus partners, students and families regarding financial aid policies and processes. Um, and then last but not least, we assist veterans and their dependents uh, with questions about any type of benefits that uh, students may be eligible for. 
Uh, so tonight we wanted to mainly focus on the two areas uh, that we received the most questions about uh, from students, and that's going to be scholarships and the FAFSA. So as it relates to scholarships, they generally fall into one of these four um, categories. So institutional scholarships, any student that is a that is applying to the College of Charleston as an entering freshman is automatically eval evaluated for any type of institutional merit based or potentially need based scholarships uh, from the College of Charleston. There is not a separate application that has to be submitted for that. That is an automatic process when you uh, submit your admissions application. If you are determined to be eligible for one of those types of scholarships, your initial notification will be sent to you once you receive your acceptance letter uh, from the Office of Admissions. Uh, for my South Carolina residents, uh, we determine eligibility for state scholarships, um, but keep in mind your residency has to be established before you graduate high school in order to ever be eligible for any of the state scholarships through the state of South Carolina. Uh, one of the major changes for state scholarships this year is that the South Carolina Commission on Higher Education is allowing students to use the super scored ACT uh, to be able to qualify for state scholarships. So we have uh, those processes built in place uh, already on our side to be able to help us determine uh, your eligibility accurately. Uh, one other thing I wanted to mention about the state scholarships is the College of Charleston is considered a test optional school as it relates to the admissions process, uh, but we do have to remind students and families that if you met the requirements for your state scholarship based on your SAT or ACT score, you do still have to submit those official test scores to the college in order for us to be able to award uh, those state scholarships. So yes, while you may not need that um, SAT or ACT score for the purposes of admissions, if you meet the qualifications for the state scholarship based on your SAT or ACT score, uh, those official scores will still need to be submitted to the college. Uh, the third area is departmental scholarships. So we do offer um, some scholarships based on certain majors or programs um, or even through some entities such as the Alumni Association. So we anticipate that those applications will be available around November 1st and we anticipate that they're going to close on January the 15th. Uh, so you will be receiving notifications from the Office of Admissions uh, for our entering freshman students uh, when that application when that application opens. So we strongly encourage all students uh, to go in and submit those applications so that you're receiving maximum consideration uh, for all of the aid that's available to students. And then last but not least is going to be outside scholarship resources. Um, so I will drop a couple of the major scholarship databases in the chat. Um, but I always encourage students to take a look at some of those additional opportunities uh, to qualify for any type of free funding. Uh, the next slide is um, largely based on FAFSA information. So if you were not aware, uh, the 2022-2023 FAFSA opened on October 1st, um, and it is based on 2020 federal tax information. So if you have not already started that application or if you have not already completed it, um, it is my recommendation to go ahead and get that done as soon as you can. Uh, the FAFSA has to be completed every year that you want to be evaluated for any type of funding. So um, any type of grant funding, even if you're only wanting to take federal loans, you still have to complete that FAFSA every single year. Uh, you have to have an FSA ID and a password in order to be able to complete that application. Um, so at least one parent and a student both have to have uh, those credentials in order to be able to complete that application. Uh, every school has a priority deadline. Um, CFC's priority deadline is March 1st. So in order for you to be 
um, in order to receive maximum consideration for any type of free funding that's out there in the forms of grants um, or any other need based aid. It is best to have that application in no later than March 1st. Um, and just a couple of tips that we offer uh, through our department. We always encourage students to complete the FAFSA early, uh, making sure that all signatures are on that application. So not only do we need to have it in by March 1st, but it has to have all of the necessary signatures on that application uh, to be considered valid. Uh, reach out to the financial aid office if you have extenuating circumstances that might affect your eligibility for aid. So like I talked about in the beginning, if there was any type of job loss, change in marital status, um, if you have substantial medical expenses, um, you know, reach out to our office so that we can have a discussion about how that uh, could potentially affect the student's eligibility for aid. Um, and then on the right hand side here, we have our contact information. Uh, so our phone number, fax number, our website. Uh, if you have general financial aid questions, we ask that those emails go to financialaid at cofc.edu. If you have scholarship specific questions, uh, we have an email address specifically for that, and that's merit scholarships at cofc.edu. Thank you, Erica. That's a lot of very helpful information and something that I know students and their families are always um, looking to learn more about. All right, well now I'd like to introduce you all to Emily Kaser with, um, she is the Assistant Director of Outreach and Programs with the Academic Advising and Planning Center here at College of Charleston. So Emily. Hi y'all, I'm Emily. <clears throat> Before we um, flip to the next slide, just wanna give you a brief overview of the types of advisors that we have in our office. Um, so the AAPC stands for Academic Advising and Planning Center. And in our office, we have professional advisors um, who meet with students to talk about personal and career goals and help with course selection. We have peer advisors who are trained students who are able to offer academic advising support. And then in our office, those two types of advisors offer individual personalized appointments. And then just so you all are aware, we do have a quick question drop in offered every day, Monday through Friday, 2 to 4 p.m., where any student can walk through the doors of our office or join virtually a Zoom session where we can answer any advising questions that they may have. You can flip to the next slide. These are some information. This is some information that we share with all of our students during orientation and in their individual advising appointments um, and that the College of Charleston requires you to have a minimum of 122 credit hours to graduate from the College of Charleston and those 122 credits um, fill different types of buckets. We like to say some of those are first year requirements, general education requirements, major and minor requirements and then electives. If you can flip to the next slide. That first year requirement specifically re, um, consists of the first year experience course, and you can see that that is our FYE. Students will have the option to take this course in their first year here at the College of Charleston. It can be in their first semester or their second semester. Um, and this is just a, a course to help students get acclimated to the College of Charleston have some common faces in multiple different classes that they're having um, and get an experience that they might not have through their course courses throughout the rest of their time here at the College of Charleston. Additionally, in your first year, you are required to take English 110 um, and this is a first year writing course. There is, and I'll talk about it in a few slides, the opportunity to bring in credit to complete this requirement, um, but this does have to be completed in the first semester or the first year. You can flip to the next slide. Awesome, so talking a little bit more about those general education requirements, th these need to be completed before graduation. Um, so you have your founding documents requirement, your foreign language requirement, and just to note, there are no placement tests required for foreign language. You have the option to take placement tests, but if that's something that you are interested in doing, you could talk to your advisor during orientation about that. Um, we have history requirements and humanity requirements. You can go ahead and flip to the next slide. 
along with math or logic requirements. And the same thing goes for math and logic. We don't have any specific placement tests for math. Um, this is based off of your SAT, ACT scores, and GPA. And if you don't submit your ACT or SAT scores, um, we can still give you a placement. The, the math department can still give you a placement score based off of um, credits that you took in high school and um, information based off of courses that you might be transferring in. We also have a natural science sequence and a social science um, courses that you have to complete for general education requirements. And just as a reminder, um, this is a lot that you have to complete. Remember, it's all adding up to that 122 requirement and your general education requirements don't need to be completed in your first year. You can flip to the next slide. You'll also have your major requirements, um, and these are depending on which major you, you select, um, and those requirements can be found in the course catalog. And we do have minors available as well. I think when I just looked today, there was like over 60 majors that you could choose from and over like 50 minors that you could choose from here at the College of Charleston. Minors are optional, and you can select up to two minors here at the college. And then if those requirements don't get you to that 122 credit hours that's needed, you also can choose elective courses to help fulfill that 122 requirement. Next slide. Awesome. Um, so just to kind of wrap things up, um, in the Academic Advising and Planning Center, we have two different types of advising. We have orientation advising, which is a group model um, where we talk about degree and major requirements. We go into more depth of what I just shared with you. And then um, the in your orientation advising, you will get information about how to schedule upcoming courses and um, get advisor help and what the next semester requirements will be as far as orientation or as far as course selection and advising is concerned. During the semester, you meet with an advisor to talk about those requirements for the major you may have already selected or are interested in. And um, our office meets with all undecided first year or transfer students and declared first year students unless your major requires advising. If your major requires advising, we will for sure let you know, and the hope is that the department will also let you know. If you are an honor student or an athlete, you will meet with an honors advisor or an athletic advisor. And flip to the next slide. Just some helpful information. Um, you can bring in transfer credits to the College of Charleston, and those can consist of dual enrollment, AP, IB, CLEP scores, things like that. If you have more questions about transfer credits, our Transfer Resource Center is a great um, office to work with with that. Just as a reminder, when you are enrolled here at the College of Charleston, a minimum of 12 credit hours is required for you to be considered a full-time um, student. We do have a course repeat policy and we do not have a grade forgiveness or exclusion policy. More information on that can be found on the registrar's website. Next slide. I believe the last slide that I have is just showing you some support services that we provide in our office and some of the other offices that we work closely with. Um, and that would be the Career Center with a Choosing a Major workshop. Um, we have these multiple times a semester, so if you are a student who is undecided and you don't really know how to select that major, Choosing a Major workshop is a really great resource. Um, we also pair with our major departments for our majors and minors fair, which is a yearly event that we have um, all majors and minors um, wanting to participate come out into a fair-like setting and students can walk around and gather information from each department. And then as far as academic success support, we work closely with our Center for Student Learning, our um, Center for Disability Services, Financial Aid, and Veteran and Military Student Services, which I think a lot of those offices are here today. I believe that's all that I have. Thank you, Emily. Yeah. Perfect overview of um, Academic Advising and Planning Center.
Uh, well, this next presenter is our um, director of the Center for International Education, Melissa Ochel, and she's going to be um, speaking to you all tonight about studying abroad and the options that are available to our students here at the college. Melissa? Thanks so much, Devin. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, as Devin said, my name is Melissa Ochel, and I'm the director of the Center for International Education, and I'm going to talk to you about all the different ways that you can study abroad while you're a student at CFC. Next slide, please. So just to give you some background information, the College of Charleston is actually um, ranked number four in the US for master's level institutions based on how many students we send abroad. Now this was pre-COVID. Um, obviously our study abroad has been mostly paused um, during the pandemic, but typically we send about a thousand students abroad every single year. There's three main um, types of study abroad programs at the College of Charleston, faculty led programs, exchange programs and affiliate programs. So we're going to talk a little bit about what options are available to you um, through those three different program types. Next slide. So College of Charleston programs are offered during multiple different terms each year. So spring break, semester, summer programs. For those programs, you'll pay CFC tuition and a program fee. You can use all of your financial aid during spring break and some uh, sorry, spring break and semester programs. Summer, you'll have to check with the financial aid office. But the benefits of these types of programs are that you're going to be traveling with other CFC students and normally a CFC program director or more than one will be on site with you. So this is a great way um, to experience international travel and learning if you haven't traveled abroad before. We have students who've never even been on an airplane who study abroad with us, and this is a great way um, to be able to do that. Um, it, it's a good option if you aren't able to commit um, to a full semester because we have so many spring break and summer options as well. And for CFC summer programs, in order to encourage um, our out-of-state students to be able to participate, they have a reduced tuition rate just for summer study abroad programs, and you'll pay the in-state tuition rate plus 30%. So it's a great way to study abroad. Next slide, please. So these are examples of some of our traditional um, fall programs. So Santiago, Chile, Florence, Italy, Trujillo, Spain, and La Rochelle, France. So those are options that we typically host every fall semester. Um, and some of the disciplines will change um, in those locations. Next slide. So in the spring semester, we typically go to Buenos Aires, Argentina, Havana, Cuba, and Trujillo, Spain. So these programs um, are more heavily focused on um, Hispanic studies, Spanish, Latin American, and Caribbean studies, those sorts of subject areas for students. Next slide. So spring break would be the first time that you would be able to study abroad with CFC as a first year student. So the first year experience abroad programs are spe specifically designed for you um, during your first year at CFC. So these do not meet the FYE um, requirement. So this would be an addition to um, your FYE semester long course, um, but these are the program options for our students that are available this year and then typically um, we also have a selection of upperclassmen programs as well and this year the School of Business is offering um, three different programs in Canada, the Netherlands and Malta. Next slide. The second um, type of programs are exchange programs. So these are semester academic year, some summer programs. You'll pay CFC tuition and fees. So you'll pay a study abroad fee and usually you pay your host university directly for housing. You can also typically take all your um, CFC financial aid and your um, state and federal aid with you because you're enrolled at CFC while you're studying abroad on this exchange program. It's an opportunity to study abroad, to study alongside with international students and local students. It's a very immersive, um, independent experience. It's a great way to really get to know a host city and a host culture. Also because um, our exchange partner universities send their students to us, you may get to meet some of their students before you even go abroad. So that's a great way to get to know more about their university before you even travel. 
Students earn transfer credit, so you have to earn the equivalent of a C or better, and it's usually a good option financially for students who are in state or out of state students who have um, scholarships that require them to be um, enrolled at CFC to receive those scholarships. Next slide, please. So as you can see, we have um, a number of partners all over the world. Um, so these uh, offer a wide range of courses for our students, and we can definitely help you narrow down uh, all of these choices. Next slide. Our third and final um, program type are affiliate programs. So if you haven't found an option that works for you um, with the CFC programs or the exchange programs, affiliate programs offer a huge range of programs. Um, everything from um, intensive um, sort of field based courses in Madagascar to semester at sea to um, all sorts of different places. So this is a great way to um, explore different different countries and different locations that may not be options through um, CFC or exchange programs. They would be options for summer semester or academic year for these programs. You do not pay CFC tuition. You'll just pay a study abroad fee and you'll pay a comprehensive program fee directly to the provider. Normally all um, of your portable aid can go with you. You'd have to check with um, the financial assistance office if any of your um, CFC scholarships would be eligible to go with you. Again, it's a huge variety of courses. I think there's almost a thousand um, just uh, among the affiliate programs. You will be studying abroad with other American students um, from across the US as well as students at the local university. There's also an additional layer of support services in country, so the affiliate program providers all have local staff that will help you um, with adjustment and um, excursions. So there's lots of opportunities um, to experience your host city and culture with their staff as well. Students will earn transfer credit, um, so that's important to note. As long as you earn the equivalent of a C or better, you'll get transfer credit and it may be less expensive um, for out of state students. So it, that's um, something to consider. Next slide, please. So these are the 22 different partners that we work with. So lots of different options, um, different price points, different countries. Um, we have some that offer um, internship opportunities, intensive language programs, lots of different um, choices there, and we can help you narrow them down. Next slide. So some things to keep in mind, um, you can take courses for your major, minor, general elective, or elective courses while you're abroad. Um, depending on your major, it may be easier to go abroad during your during um, your sophomore year if you're interested in doing a semester so that you are able to take more of your major courses here. And CIE can help you determine, uh, along with your academic advisor, which semester might be best for you to study abroad if you're interested in, in doing a whole semester. Note that you can take courses in English even if you're going to a non-English speaking country. So um, at all of our partner universities, you can take courses in English at all of them. You can also take intensive language courses if you want to, but know that you can take courses in English. Um, definitely you want to plan as early as you can, especially if you're doing a semester. Most students typically go abroad junior year, although we're seeing more and more go abroad their sophomore year as well. And keep in mind that you can also intern abroad for academic credit, so that's a great way to have both an international and a practical work experience um, while you're abroad. Um, so study abroad, we consider an investment in your future, so it's money well spent, um, but we can help you plan and budget ahead of time. Um, and the cost definitely depends on what sort of program you select and where you're going. Um, in some cases, studying abroad can be equal to or even less than the cost of attending CFC for a semester. I work with students in Germany and their housing costs there are dramatically less than um, living in Charleston, so that's um, a, a nice perk. Um, and then just remember to speak with the financial assistance office to talk about what sort of aid would go with you when you study abroad, but there are lots of scholarships available to help you. So our office has scholarships. Some of the academic schools and departments have scholarships. We can also help you apply for national scholarships that are open to American students. 
um, throughout the US. And there are also scholarships available through our affiliate partners as well. Next slide. That may be it. Ah, yes, here we go. So feel free to follow us on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Visit our website. Um, once you're a student here, you'll be able to apply online at um, via TRM as our application site, but you can still visit it and learn more about the programs um, now. So we look forward to meeting you and um, helping you figure out where is your perfect study abroad destination. Thanks so much, Devin. Thank you, Melissa. I, I want to go through college all over again so I can go abroad. Very jealous of you students that have these opportunities coming up. All right, well now um, I'm going to take a moment to introduce you all um, to the direct, executive director of the Career Center here at CFC, Jim Allison. Jim, take it away. Hey, terrific. Thank you, Devin. I appreciate it. And thanks for your time, everyone, tonight. As Devin mentioned, I'm executive director of the Career Center here at the College of Charleston, and I started in May of 2016 and I love working at the college. Um, our team, that slide that we just saw there, is uh, really, really experienced. I'm proud of our team and the fact that we're able to serve all majors, and we do work with our alumni, uh, in particular uh, our, our vast alumni network as well, and we provide career development and career services to, to everyone. Uh, so I think that's an important concept or important philosophy here. We're a comprehensive, uh, career Center, and what that means is we we provide everything from uh, resume development to interviewing skills to internship and experiential learning, uh, all the way to job and graduate school placement. Again, this is our team photo here. We're, we're uh, we've just hired a, a new employee here. We're very excited. Uh, retired Marine Curtis Hayward, and I've just extended an offer for that other vacancy. So it's a good time to to be here at the college and the Career Center. Next slide, please. Uh, you can see some general services here, uh, career counseling, resume and cover letter review. Uh, we do career assessments with first year students to help uh, students understand what potential majors could be for them as they progress through college. Uh, networking is, is one of the bullet points here. Uh, currently through our Handshake platform, we have uh, right at 650,000 companies. Uh, 10,000 of whom are currently actively recruiting our students, which does mean we have more than a one-to-one -one ratio, more than one company per individual student at the college currently recruiting our students. So it's a very good time to be a college student if you would like to go and conduct an internship or go to work and apply your degree. A very active job market and, and definitely a time where recruiters are looking for talent. Uh, with that 650,000 and those 10,000 companies, uh, who recruit our students. That is a national reach, which means we have opportunities all the way from Portland, Oregon to Portland, Maine, down to uh, Miami, Florida, to uh, San Diego, to, to Dallas, you name it, throughout the country, New York, uh, certainly in the Eastern Seaboard, we have lots of opportunities. We have about 90,000 alumni as well who are, who are active in LinkedIn or have a LinkedIn profile. So essentially any student who interacts with our office who says, you know, I'd like to go into this type of career field, field or I'm interested in this type of company. Um, we can connect a student just about uh, to any any company or any organization in the United States uh, right now. So I think that's an important thing to, to remember. Uh, we are committed to helping our students with graduate school planning and their future if that, if that applies to medical school or law school or PhD or master's programs, of course. Uh, we are also have launched a program called Launchpad, which allows us to interact and, and provide services to underrepresented minority first generation college students and students of color. We're very proud of that um, because we're really hoping to work with our students, especially in the first year, to understand what, what opportunities are out there and available currently. And those are vast, as I mentioned earlier. And lastly, my office oversees on-campus student employment. We have in any given semester, just over a thousand students who work on campus. Uh, so we, we do work closely with financial aid in that, uh, that area uh, to, to provide uh, services to students uh, in that capacity through federal work study and then in general uh, through, through non-federal work study uh, on-campus jobs and then graduate assistantships for our grad students. So we, we have an active student employment office here as well. Next slide, please. Uh, programs and events, uh, I highlighted a few here just to give you an idea. I mentioned the Launchpad, the Diversity, Equity and Inclusion Initiative. Uh, we have virtual career fairs currently. Uh, we have had some in-person tabling from 
uh, recruiters. And we've also been doing some site visits and had some companies coming back onto campus. Uh, most recently, we've had uh, JP Morgan Chase and then New Core Steel and then uh, just yesterday, Michelin uh, out of the Greenville area of South Carolina visited campus. Uh, we have a German American Business Summit in February, which we're very proud of. Uh, South Carolina is a, a, a an active market for supply chain and manufacturing, and that's a, a great event for us. Uh, and that last bullet point on this slide, I think, is important. Uh, just in the past uh, two and a half to three months, uh, the Career Center at the College of Charleston has been leading uh, our efforts and our initiative around financial wellness and literacy. Uh, so we've hired a graduate assistant here in, in our MBA program who is currently helping students one on one as well as small groups uh, to understand uh, budgeting and how to uh, pay down debt and how to do all sorts of other financial wellness and literacy uh, items. That we're going to start with a program soon called iGrad or iGrad.com. That should be happening any week now. Uh, and we're going to launch that for our students. And that's a whole series of webinars and video tutorials to assist students and, and understanding everything from salary negotiation as a senior to becoming a graduate student and how one might pay down college and then graduate school debt, as I mentioned earlier. So we're very proud of that financial wellness uh, initiative that we're, we're seeing currently. Next slide, please. Uh, just a snapshot, I use the word snapshot when I mentioned that there are 10,000 companies in Handshake currently uh, recruiting our students. Uh, there also are certain companies that are actively uh, working with our office through sponsorships and through direct recruiting. And this is just a, a few logos just to give you an idea of some of the companies with whom we work currently. Uh, I could have added logos for pages and pages, uh, but these are just a few uh, that we work with. So that's just a snapshot of some recruiters. Next slide, please. Uh, career outcomes for our students. I mentioned the 10,000 recruiters on that bottom line. Uh, we put about 22,000 full time positions in the handshake last year. We currently have about 3,700 of our current undergraduate students with accounts in handshake. So it is an active job board and internship board for our students. At the same time, uh, just based on that volume and those numbers, uh, essentially, when students apply for opportunities, they have a very good chance at a callback or an interview um, because of the volume involved. Uh, that top number on the top left is 67 percent, completing at least one internship or co-op uh, while attending the college is slightly ahead of national averages. And then the 90 percent completing at least one experiential learning opportunity is actually that's actually been updated within the past two weeks to 95 percent of our graduates by the time they graduate have completed at least one experiential learning and that falls into several categories and we're, we're very proud of that uh, in lieu of the fact that there is no requirement for experiential learning that is students opting to do at least one of an internship or study abroad or service learning etc 76 percent of our students conduct two or more experiential learning opportunities while they're enrolled here as 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 undergraduate students. We're very proud of that as well. The 81 percent for the class of 2019 had a job in hand uh, within one year of graduation and then 14 percent of that class had graduate school had matriculated to graduate school or, or would had attended or, or indicated they were attending graduate school uh, that year that year after graduation. So what that means is uh, within one year of graduation for the class of 2019, 81% of them either had a job or 14% had graduate school or 95% of them within one year had a career plan. They had a job, a career uh, or a graduate school placement. Our grad school placement number does vary again from year to year between 14 and 18 percent and it does vary by major. Uh, we have had years where our chemistry majors, as an example, one third of them went directly to graduate school upon graduation, as an example. But we are proud of that 95 percent. We followed up with some of those graduates for 2019 to find out what they were doing. Uh, the 5 percent that we weren't sure uh, had a job or grad school and we found a wide range of, uh, excuse me, of activities. Uh, from taking a year off to to volunteering to to service and travel, um, but we're still very excited about that. Next slide, please. Experiential learning is very important to the college. It's actually uh, one key element and the key element of pillar two of our strategic plan. The Career Center does help lead that charge at the college, although every single office on campus 
every single staff member, every single faculty member. It, it really takes everyone as we work together to help our students gain experiential learning. These opportunities right here are, are oftentimes what fill a student's resume uh, by senior year. So as they're graduating, these are the types of opportunities or types of activities they've completed, which which really fill out their their resume. And it's an important thing to note too that employers, the ones with whom we work, do indicate they're looking for certain skills or competencies from graduating seniors or from students as they enter the workforce or into the work world. And these opportunities right here are primarily the way that students gain that experience and and develop those competencies and develop those skills by directly working with supervisors at internships by working with faculty uh, with undergraduate research by conducting those campus jobs with the supervisor here on campus at study abroad which we heard about earlier and and these other elements that you see here so we're we're very excited about the fact that we're able to provide uh, this this opportunity and provide some one-on-one -on -one mentoring and coaching to students to help them with their experiential learning it, it does um, the feedback we've gotten it does it absolutely does help our graduating students as they matriculate out of college to interview well and to do well uh, in, in their first year and second year and third year on, in their new job as they're onboarded and, and, and develop into those key and as they grow into those first couple years with any company and oftentimes as they switch uh, jobs within that first year or two that that's something else that uh, can happen as well next slide please so just a quote from one of our students i think uh <clears throat> this was you know taken a couple of months ago uh, we are seeing most of our students virtually currently through zoom although we we do have some in-person small events some tabling uh, we are doing some one-on-one -on -one, uh, interpersonal career counseling here in the office in person we're giving students that option um, so there is a wide range of uh, interaction with our with our undergraduate students currently um, but i thought this quote was really a good one <laughs> and we're uh, obviously we hear that from our students as well as our recent alumni as, as well that they are happy with um, the experience they've had here with the career center and at the college of course next slide please just uh, there's our website and our phone number right there. We're very active. If you if you go to the Career Center website at the College of Charleston, you'll see all of our social media, Instagram, Twitter, our newsletter, and so on. Uh, we're happy to interact with any of you. Uh, you're, you're feel free to drop an email or message into our our office uh, email via our website, uh, and just know that we're here to help uh, all students when they matriculate to the college. I sincerely appreciate your time tonight. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank Jeff. You, Jeff. Sorry, about, Sorry that. about that. All right. Well, our next presenter is from um, the director for the Center for Student Learning here on campus, another valuable resource um, for all of our students, um, and that is Lindy Coleman. So, Lindy, I'm going to hand it over to you. Great, thank you. Thanks, uh, thanks so much for having me, and thanks for being with uh, with us tonight. It's great to get the opportunity to hear even more about my partners um, in uh, academic and other support services on campus. Uh, for my friends who are uh, who are running the slides behind the scenes, I'll let you know that I ch I chose to have only one slide, so this is the only slide. So you all get a little a little break uh, for a second with running slides, and I intentionally chose to put everything um, uh, to put some key points for the things that. I I wanted to talk about on one slide because uh, we often say at the Center for Student Learning that we're we're a one stop shop um, as far as academic support services uh, for your courses at the college. We're located in the library and there's um, and there's a picture of the front of our Adelstone library. We're located on the first floor of the library, which is a great spot for academic support, tutoring, um, supplemental instruction, academic coaching. I'll talk about that in a second. Um, it's a great spot for uh, for us to be located in because students at the college are using the library consistently, not only because they're great students, but because the library is a beautiful space. Doesn't hurt that it has a Starbucks um, in there, but it has beautiful study spaces, um, both for group study, small group study, individual study, three floors of, um, of excellent and comfortable spaces for study. So we're really fortunate that our, um, our large um, compound of offices, of tutoring labs, and other um, academic support areas are located on the first floor of the Adelstone Library. 
I'm even more thankful this fall uh, that we're back at about the 70 to 30 percent um, ratio of in-person in-person services uh, versus virtual services and it's nice to be able to offer um, both of those types of services for students uh, meeting them wherever uh, wherever they are and wherever they need to be so I said that we're the comprehensive and the and the um, kind of one stop shop academic support center and I, I, I really believe that's true um, when students come in the front doors of the CSL what they see are the walk in tutoring labs which are the bulk of our services walk in labs that are um, that are available from 10 in the morning until nine at night continuously staffed with student employees with tutors. Jim mentioned uh, just a few minutes ago the uh, the value that the college places on experiential learning um, at the college, and we're so proud that we've uh, we employ about 175 student employees in academic support roles throughout um, throughout the year at the college, um, and thus that is very valuable experiential learning that those students are getting. Not only are they working on and hon honing their own skills in their own academic areas, um, but they're also helping other students to learn and that is uh, just the essence of a great experience. So when you walk in our doors and you see these walk-in uh, tutoring labs in a wide variety of subject areas, including foreign languages, math, writing, the natural sciences, computer science, social sciences, public speaking, um, as well as um, as well as uh, a number of different cor courses in the, uh, the from the business school core business school courses. Those are all walk in labs. And so as I said, students can walk in without an appointment and just sign in, come into one of the labs and uh, start to work on their own homework and tutors are rotating around in those labs. So it gives students that unique opportunity to come in, get a little bit of a help of help stay there in the lab, let the tutor work with someone else and let the, that student kind of work out some of their own issues and their own challenges um, until maybe they have another question. So it gives students the opportunity not only to get the help that they need, but also to work on um, on their own courses, coursework on their own. That's the perfect example of that, I think, is in the math lab. It's a really widely used and a popular lab and students may come in with a question. They may have gotten stuck on their homework. They come in with a question. They sit at the table that corresponds to their class. They get their question answered or they get some help with it. The tutor walks away to help somebody else and then the student is sitting there at the table continuing to work on their homework um, now equipped with a little more knowledge and now they can move on uh, in their own learning. So that's a great thing that we see every single day. In addition to the drop in or the walk in tutoring, we do offer um, this is the second bullet on my slide. We do offer some by appointment tutoring in selected courses um, that are maybe not as heavily used as the walk in tutoring labs and those are updated on a regular basis. We keep our finger on the pulse of courses that students ask for support in um, and, uh, and, um, and and but it aren't maybe as widely used as some of the other areas. Supplemental instruction or SI is a very specific, very particular type of sub academic support that um, that is in what we call historically challenging classes, classes where those intro level um, courses are are very challenging at the College of Charleston that tends to be in the natural sciences like biology and chemistry and a few core business school classes. And what happens with the SI model is that um, is that students um, who are exceptional in that field, exceptional in that major, are tapped by their faculty, they're trained by us, they're embedded back into their into those classes, those intro classes with your students, um, and then they schedule three study sessions every week on that particular content area. It's a very valuable, very effective um, way to uh, to to gain success in those historically challenging courses. We also offer through um, academic coaching and peer academic coaching, uh, both with our professional staff and peers. We offer a personalized academic support in one on one uh, sessions with students on an as needed basis. And then also we offer study skills workshops throughout the semester where students can just pick up some skills that they um, that they need. So all of those things are happening within the CSL and students um, can just come to the front desk in the library again on the first floor of the library um, and access the help that they need um, and we can guide them to the right resource. Uh, so I'm very um, thankful to be with you all uh, today and I look forward to uh, to seeing uh, to seeing you on campus. Thank you, Lindy.
Last but not least, um, our next presenter is Deb Myhall, the Director of Disability Services here at the College of Charleston. Deb. Good evening. I hope you all are having a good uh, night tonight. Thank you all so much for coming to this session. Um, again, I'm Deborah Myhall and I'm the Director of the Center for Disability Services, which is also known as SNAP or Students Needing Access Parity. Can you go to the next slide? OK, so um, our mission is to ensure equal access to um, the programs and services at the College of Charleston for students with disabilities. Um, we have about 11,000 undergraduate students and we are serving actually a little bit more than a thousand of them. So we on average serve about 10 percent of the college population, including graduate students as well. Next slide. OK, um, we have a national reputation at the college for being learning disability friendly, and also um, we are a top college for students with visual impairments. And a lot of that has to do with the environment at the college and the um, receptivity of our faculty and staff and our commitment to serving all learners. Next slide. OK. So um, our application process is completely voluntary and initiated by the student. Um, we recommend that folks start early. So the point at which you have made your decision to, uh, to attend the College of Charleston is when you should go to our website and follow the instructions for applying. Um, it's a relatively simple process. You complete a, an application form um, where we ask you some basic questions about you and your experiences receiving accommodations or not in the past, and we find out what you're looking for accommodation-wise at the college. We request a reasonable amount of current documentation that describes how you're impacted by the disability. And um, one of the things that the College of Charleston offers that is um, kind of unique is that if um, a student has a disability that specifically impacts them in a language based area, then they may qualify for alternatives to our foreign language requirements. And if they um, have something like a mathematics learning disability, then they may be considered for alternatives to our math requirement if they are in a major where math is not considered essential. Um, and our website, of course, has abundant details about everything related to um, connecting with us. Next slide. Oh, it's the same slide. I don't know how I missed that one. Um, keep going to the next one. OK, some um, commonly requested academic accommodations, though absolutely this is not exhaustive in any way, are um, extended testing time, testing in an environment less distracting than the classroom, use of assistive technology like um, screen enlargement software or um, text to speech software, um, computer use to be able to type responses on tests versus handwriting them, um, lecture recording. So, um, you know, again, the, you know, the sky's the limit. It just really depends on how the person is impacted by what they have going on. Um, and we'll try to find something that ensures that um, you don't have any barriers to your participation at the college. Next slide. So once a student um, is done applying for services with our office and we reply to say, yes, of course, um, you qualify as a person with a disability per our standards. Now let's talk about what accommodations you need. So we'll have a dialogue with you in order to come to an agreement um, about what accommodations um, the faculty members are going to need to know about. And then you will end up with a letter that looks like this, where basically it says, dear professor, um, this student qualifies as an individual with a disability and it doesn't share what the disability is. Um, here's the accommodations that they are approved for. 
contact us if you have any questions or concerns. And we have a part in all new faculty orientation sessions. We also have ongoing communication with our academic affairs partners over the course of the year and years in visiting department meetings um, and collaborating with them. So um, uh, the faculty really understand um, what the expectations are um, when they receive a letter like this and know who to contact if they have questions. Um, next slide. Oh, this is not a slide that I have to address, but one thing <laughs> that I do want to mention is that um, a, a popular question is whether or not if a student has what's called an IEP or a 504 through their um, high school, if that automatically transfers to the college environment and it doesn't. Um, effectively, you have to kind of start from scratch and in a different way um, in requesting what you need accommodation wise. So if anyone has any questions, please reach out to our office and we're happy to um, assist you in that entire process. So thank you. Thank you, Deb, uh, Deborah, and, and another big thank you to all of our presenters tonight. Each of these offices are so student focused and provide immeasurable support to our students. So I hope you all enjoyed the great overview that they they each provided this evening. Before we conclude tonight's event, um, I just wanted to go back to that last slide, if we could, um, with the deadlines. Um, I wanted to provide you all with a quick reminder. If you have not applied yet to the College of Charleston, um, obviously our early decision deadline of October 15th has passed, but we still have several more for you to keep on your radar, um, with our next being early action and the Honors College priority deadline on November the 1st. Um, so please keep that deadline in mind. Uh, January 5th is our 15th is our regular decision deadline. Um, and then after that date of January 15th, we'll consider um, applications on a case by case basis. Um, but of course, if you have any questions about which deadline is best for you or about your application process in general, we always encourage you to reach out to your admissions counselor and you can find who that specific counselor is on our admissions website under find your counselor. Next slide, please. So this evening's event um, is one of many in, a, in our virtual series that we offer. Um, and so I'd encourage you all to continue to keep track of our events that we have coming up. In fact, we have another one this coming Thursday, which will um, focus on diversity and inclusion at the College of Charleston. Um, which is just a great opportunity to tune in for that. And then we'll also have a student panel and a faculty panel um, hosted in November. So keep those dates on your radar, check out our virtual visitor center online, but we're also hosting some events in person, um, some expanded visit day opportunities. So check your calendars, check our calendar and sign up for those. And we'll of course have more opportunities in the spring. But again, we thank you all for joining us tonight. Um, we hope that we will see your applications coming in, but more importantly, we hope to see you on campus uh, next fall as CFC students. So again, big thank you to all of our presenters and to you all for taking time to join us this evening. Have a great night.